The following program has been edited down from its original length and comes from the DVD Dino Hunter, High-Tech Dinosaur Digging. Visit us today to obtain the whole program. One of the great aspects behind the fascination of dinosaurs are the nearly limitless amount of unknowns. Now to a paleontologist, these unknowns are both fascinating and perplexing. Now it's commonly accepted that dinosaurs died out over 65 million years ago. But what does the evidence actually tell us? What is the process in which these fossils are excavated so that they can be studied? And is there any evidence that supports a global catastrophic flood only a few thousand years ago. Paleontologists have searched the entire world looking for those answers. And sometimes they come to Wyoming, where we are today. Because today, we're gonna dig up a dinosaur on Dino Hunter. It's known worldwide, the Hell Creek Formation in Montana and the Upper Cretaceous Lance Formation in Wyoming contain some of the largest T-Rex fossils ever found. This includes the dinosaur fossils found by Mary Schweitzer and Dr. Jack Horner, some of which contain soft tissue. But these formations are also rich in many other types of dinosaur fossils, such as Triceratops and Edmontosaurus. Every spring, one of the largest dig sites in the world opens up during the month of June. It's known as the Dinosaur Research Project at the Hansen Research Station near Newcastle, Wyoming. It's operated under invitation by Southwestern Adventist University under the leadership of paleontologist Dr. Art Chadwick. Over the last 20 years, tens of thousands of fossils, which include many dinosaur remains, have been dug out of the ground by teams working a total of 21 quarries. How did you get involved in all of this? I came out here at the request of a friend who was a paleontologist and he took me up on the ridge over this way and I got out of the truck and I couldn't stand on the ground without walking on dinosaur bones. And that really hurt me because I realized <laughs> we aren't making dinosaurs anymore. So these bones, <laughs> when they're washed away, they're gone forever. Yeah. So we're losing data every day. And even though I was working on another project down in Peru at the time, I said, I have to spend time on this project. I have to try to save this data for future generations. So that's how I got started. Under the direction of Dr. Chadwick, they have developed some of the best high-tech methods in the world for logging, mapping, and documenting dinosaur graveyards. Why are you going into such detail with all of your documentation and all of your research? Well, we really were stimulated to do good work here because a secular paleontologist had been on site prior to us being here, and he had challenged the ranch owner, he said, this is the last day science is going to be done on, on this ranch. And the ranch owner said, well, no, we're going to find some Christian paleontologists who can come out here and do, this, do, do good work. So after we had worked here for a season or, or two, we decided that the normal way of doing this is not good enough for us. Okay. And one of uh, our team is a geophysicist, astrophysicist, and he suggested using GPS. So we went back and started finding ways to get a hold of a high resolution GPS, which is what they use for surveying. And it's accurate to centimeter yeah. or less. In 2000, we started mapping bones using the GPS. So we can take a series of points along the bone. Those are accurate to within a centimeter. 
and that gives us a way to register that bone on the computer exactly where it was found in the ground. So we take a picture of the bone, we register it with those points using the geographical information system software, and then that stays there and all the other bones can accrue around it. So we can reconstruct the quarry just the way it looks without the dirt. And so we do a lot of research just looking at the distribution of these bones without ever being out in the field. And we can do that because we have this high resolution data. Dr. Chadwick's research team logs each piece, repairs any damaged pieces, then takes many photos of the bone. After these photos are taken, they are put into software and a 360 degree view is provided of each specimen on the university's website. Their methods are known and respected by paleontologists around the world. Over the years, the ranch has produced an extensive accumulation of fossil remains, totaling more than 10,000 creatures, including 12 genera of dinosaurs, 10 genera of non-dinosaurian reptiles, 7 genera of fish, 5 genera of mammals, as well as mollusks and even dinosaur eggshells. The most numerous fossils at the site are the bones of Edmontosaurus, a duck-billed dinosaur growing up to a length of 30 to 40 feet. They were an herbivore who may have lived in water or swamp-like environments. The remains of Triceratops are fairly common, along with Tyrannosaurus, Pachycephalosaurus, and Dromaeosaurus. It's also the location where one of the first Nanotyrannus was ever found. The Nano is believed to be the smaller cousin of the T-Rex. Now at this dig site right here, is there a, an overarching goal as far as like what you're going to do with the fossils and all of the data that you're collecting here? What do you say is the mission statement of this dig? We are here to find out what we can learn about the dinosaurs from the bones. In other words, they don't talk, but they tell us things without speaking. They tell us things about what happened to them. And we're trying to decipher that. And it's very exciting. It's like crime scene investigation. Yeah. You're, you're reconstructing the history of the animals from these bones. It's like Sherlock Holmes deducing all the little elements, the little sciences of it. Exactly. Time for breakfast. Let's go get some food. All right, I just had breakfast, fueled up and ready to go, and we're wasting daylight, so let's get to work. I've been told that there's several different dig sites here, and I'm not sure which one is the best, so I'm gonna go to them all, because we gotta find a dinosaur. There are a total of 21 quarries at the Hanson Ranch, but only four in operation during the week I'm here. The first three are close together, but the fourth is several miles away by a truck using only four-wheel drive. To take advantage of my time, I'm sticking to the first three. This is North Quarry, and I'm meeting up with Erin. She's the lady in charge who's gonna give us the grand tour of our first location. Hi. Hi there. How's it going? Good. All right, so my first question, what exactly are we doing here? <laughs> um, well, I've got my team here. This is North Quarry. McKinnon is taking down this wall here um, a layer at a time, so he creates a shelf, and then he brings the whole shelf down, exposing the fossils. You can see some of the fossils that he's exposed here. So this is um, oh part of an, um, a vertebra here. Nice. The, um, the round part of the vertebra would have gone uh, right about here, like this. And then this is uh, this would go up. Got it. There's also something coming right over here, right? Yeah, uh, this looks like it's a bone right next to a tendon. And I don't know if they're supposed to go together or not, but I'm really hoping that they do because that would be really neat to find these two uh, body parts together in the correct context. Oh yeah. yeah. 
How long do you usually stay at one location? Uh, well, <laughs> this quarry has been open since the dig began, and uh, this wall actually started way back there. Um, and so we've moved it all the way up uh, season by season. Uh, so you can see more or less the wall is pretty straight. We try to keep everybody going about the same pace in this direction. That's helpful when you're digging next to somebody and you find a fossil that goes over goes where they're their digging. Area, yeah. It would be helpful if you're working at about the same rate so that you get to it around the same time. How many fossils have you found at this site? For this season, we've probably already found uh, over a hundred. That includes everything all the way from a tooth all the way up to larger bones like ribs, um, large toe bones. So what kinds of dinosaurs have you found at this location? Predominantly we find fossils from Hadrosaur. We've also found the teeth from Nanotyrannus and occasionally we find Triceratops. As I'm looking at this wall, my first question is, how do you know what is bone and what is rock? Um, that comes with a lot of experience. <laughs> you can see that the bones have this distinctive look to them. They're, they're this characteristic brown color usually, and they're very smooth. And they make a certain noise when you hit them with a dig tool, and you learn to recognize it as you You just digging. kind of experience <laughs> the rock as you're going through it. <laughs> Something like that. All right. now. These are some big bones. Yeah, so you can see there are a lot of bones exposed on this wall. And we've actually done something special here. We took down this whole section and we've exposed all the bones so that you can see how they would appear in the ground. And we actually cast this entire wall uh, in a latex mold, removed it. We're taking it back to the museum where we'll make a plaster model of how the quarry actually looks. So you can with the actually bones in see place. what the bones would look like in the ground. That's right. And so visitors to the museum will be able to interact with this wall and get an idea of where bones would be in our in a real quarry. Wow. And you were saying that the bigger bones are settling lower. So you yes. can see down at the bottom, those are definitely much bigger bones. It's not like a, a full skeleton though. That's right. The bones that we find in these quarries are not articulated, which means they're not together the way a complete skeleton would be. You'll find them separated from each other, largest bones on the bottom of the bed, and you'll find smaller <laughs> bones and fragments up here, uh, teeth distributed at the top. Got it. Um, so it's, it's a graded bone bed. And where you see the larger bones there on the bottom, um, that is the bottom of the bone layer. So if you keep going further, uh, you'll find below that um, what we call a non-fossil bearing strata. So there are no more fossils below it. It's a different kind of sediment. Okay. I think uh, I'm gonna go look at a few more dig sites. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking me through your, uh, your quarry here. No problem. All right, moving on. This program is brought to you by Awesome Science Media, an organization committed to producing high quality science focused television content, all from a biblical worldview. Be sure to sign up for our email newsletter to find out about our new titles and get deals on our content. To learn more about who we are, visit our website and online store at awesomesciencemedia.com. You can now get access to all of our programming on our video on demand platform at awesomesci.tv.com with a low monthly subscription rate of $4.99. And for a limited time, the first seven days are free, so you can check us out before you commit. Subscribe today and get access to every episode and documentary we have produced. Not only will you get access to all of our programs, but every behind the scenes video, blooper reels, interview clips, scientist testimony, producer video blog, on-site production previews, and spherical production videos. Awesome Sci TV will also be the place where we release our newest content, so you'll be the first in the world to see our newest episodes and documentaries. We're always producing content, so new titles will be added as soon as we release them. No matter where you live on the globe, if you have internet, you can subscribe to Awesome Sci TV. So what are you waiting for? Check us out today. Sign up for a seven-day trial. You'll have the choice to sign up for our monthly package or save money by signing up for our yearly subscription. But if you don't want to subscribe, Awesome Sci TV also offers each title for rent or for purchase. 
view our content from our website or download it to your computer or mobile device when you purchase it. It's easy to access any of our titles. Get all of our great programming and build up your faith in God's Word. Remember, for a limited time, you can sign up for a seven-day free trial. Go to AwesomeSciTV.com to sign up now. Most people would say that science should be unbiased and objective. But we are humans, and when we are honest with ourselves, we have to admit our bias. Often our worldviews or bias play into our belief about what happened in the past. These become our presuppositions, our starting points. A naturalist believes that only natural processes can be used to understand the world and deny any supernatural causes. They would never consider a creator god or the biblical global flood. Therefore, they would interpret all evidence in a way that confirms their belief that only nature exists. Naturalistic evolutionists believe that dinosaur bones were buried in mud and sand over millions of years in small regional floods. They totally ignore the idea of a global flood. So how can we be sure of what happened in the past? Could it be that dinosaurs buried here give us some clues about when and how they died? I hope that, that the secular paleontologists are open-minded and willing to go where the data lead. But we certainly are. We're trying to understand the history of these bones. Given that we have insight into the history of the world from the Bible, we still are trying to understand what the bones tell us and whether they're consistent with that or not. We have been uh, able to decipher some of this data enough to say that this is deposited rapidly, catastrophically, if you will, because these bones are in a graded bed. The big bones are down at the bottom and the smaller bones are at the top. That means it was a single catastrophic debris flow that put these bones in here. So that's something we learned because we were looking open-minded. The last site I want to visit is a bit of a walk from the first two sites. So they let me borrow some fun transportation. All right, this is our third site. This is Stair Quarry, and I'm here to meet Keith, the man with the PhD who's going to give me the rundown. Hey there. How's it Morning. going? Morning. All right, so this is Stair Quarry? Stair Quarry. Okay, so what exactly am I looking at here? Well, if you look around this area, initially they found a few uh, bones clear off on the edge over here. Uh, a couple of those bones were very important from the Nano Tyrannosaurus. There are about four of these creatures that have been found in the world. Oh wow, so this is a big find. A big find. Most of this ranch has the mix of bones as they've been moved in and just jumbled. Okay. This was from the same individual. Now what else have you found uh, like in this area over here? Well, in the same, in the same area, there's a single hadrosaur. You've seen the main bones uh, over there. Large vertebrae, probably 35, 40 feet, six, seven ton creature. Okay. So we're finding pieces of that creature here also. If these last couple years, we haven't worked here. We said we're gonna give it a last try and see if we can find any more nano bones or not. Okay. Now, how much farther will you go into this hillside before you say, let's pull the plug and... An hour and a half. An hour and a half. So this is the last <laughs> final push. This is the last push. For the we're stair quarry. Pull into the edge here. I've been to a handful of sites now, and I think I'm getting an idea of what is happening here. So, the next item on the agenda, I'm gonna learn how to dig for fossils. All right, Aaron, I'm back. Okay. So, before I mess anything up, I'm just gonna lean myself to your expertise uh, and teach me your ways. So, we've already taken this shelf down, and you can see it's pretty level. Um, and so we have this corner that's up a little bit higher than the rest and we want to bring it all down to this level and we might find something on the way down. So we're going to use our scraper and um, we just take off a layer at a time and just paying attention we want to be able to uh, work carefully when we find it. What are some indicators that I've reached a fossil? Well, you'll hear a noise and it sounds kind of like you've run into glass and it just kind of sounds like clink 
<laughs> okay. And it feels different than the rock, and it doesn't it doesn't yield easily to the scraper. You'll probably recognize that you've run into something. Um, and you want to keep the area clear uh, so that you can see what's going on. Eventually, when we get a pile here, we just put it in the dustpan and move it to a bucket. Let's say I, I bump into a fossil. Obviously, I'm going to stop and call for you, but uh, what would the process look like from that point forward? Okay, so once you run into something, you're going to want to switch to a finer, finer tool. The scraper isn't going to be a lot of help to you anymore. So you'll switch to something like a pick, and then you would carefully work the dirt around it. Now, once you can see a good portion of, of the fossil, uh, then you would want to add some glue to that. So you would take your glue and you would carefully drop a few drops on it, and then you would continue to expose it using a fine tool like a pick or you could get an even finer tool um, if you needed to work more carefully. Um, and actually a lot of the fine, finer tools that we use are uh, donated dental picks and things like that. Okay. So we can get really picks. fine with, yeah, with removing the sediment from around it. And you'll always want to use your brush to keep the area clear so you can really see what you're working with and also so that you don't glue extra dirt to the bone. Um, now they'll take care of those things in the lab, but we want to send them a fossil in the best shape that we can. Okay, so I'm gonna try this now. And if I hit something slightly harder, just be ready because I'm gonna be hollering like crazy, okay? <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Digging for fossils. Okay, so I have the bones uh, completely unearthed. All the corners are, are exposed and you can actually kind of pick them up and move them. So I don't, I don't want to do too much there. What's the next step in the process from here? Okay, so now we need to start documenting these finds. The first step will be uh, for you to document in this notebook um, by sketching <laughs> what you found. And you can follow the sequence that I have here. Um, so you'll see that I have a find number here. You can go to the next number, which is nine. And uh, this is the number that'll stay with your bone forever. <laughs> and I have to get you a card for that. Okay. And then here's the other information. Description, which quarry you're in, and what type of sediment this is. So this is shaley mudstone, so you'll include okay. that. Um, so here's the tape measure, so you can take some measurements. And I'll let you work on entering that information while I get you a card. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do my best to not completely botch this drawing here. Okay, so wow, she's she's really good at this. Number nine. So this is a skull bone fragment. I'm gonna get a card and tag this bone because I dug it up and it's gonna have my name on it and it's gonna have its permanent number for the rest of its life. So here's your card. There's a place here for excavator, that's you. That's me. So you'll fill that in. <laughs> so this card has the number that will track your bone all the way back to the museum and into the um, collections. All right, so, can you read that? Yes. Okay. So um, you'll write the date of your find, all right, now do I leave this here? <laughs> yes, so once you get your card ready, we keep it with the fossil and we'll call for GPS and they'll come and take the points and photograph your find. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put that right there so it doesn't blow away. Give you your logbook back. All right. Thank you so much. I just dug up a skull bone. All right, good job. Thanks, appreciate it. <laughs> So Aaron's got the GPS. Apparently this is going to take a little bit of teamwork, especially with some of the wind whipping around. Um, what do we do here? I'm going to support the top and you'll guide the tip at the bottom. All right, you can move to the next point. All right. So what I'm doing at the top is I'm leveling it to make sure that the top is directly above the bottom. Perfect. I think this will be the final point. Okay. How's that? All right, so we got our points. Now we'll actually use the same instrument to take a photo of the fossil and it'll automatically attach it to the points that we just took. Okay, so set your card right next to the fossil and make sure we can see all the information on the card. Okay. 
All right, so now you're ready to wrap up your fossil and send it back to the museum. All right, so here's the foil All right. and here so are I the just, stickers. Is, it, is there like a process here? Do I just gently wrap it in the tin foil? Right, so you can set the tin foil down and you can put the card underneath this like okay. that. Uh, and now you need one sticker on the inside. So here's your number, 835. And then you wrap it up nicely. <laughs> How nicely? Like like leftovers from dinner nicely? Oh. or Just so nothing falls out. Okay. Okay. And then here. one more sticker here. This one for the outside. And we're ready to send it back. Yeah! That's the whole process. I just dug yeah. up a fossil. <laughs> it's on the record. All right. Hi, I'm Kyle Justice of Awesome Science Media. I'm glad you're watching our programs. I hope you've been ministered to. Some of you might feel called to give towards our ministry to help us produce even more great programming. I'm gonna show you how. We've tried to be creative in the way we partner with our viewers. So we've set up a special producer's website just for you. Similar to crowdfunding, we have partnered with Patreon, a site that helps support us as content creators on a monthly basis. By giving, you become a producer with us. As a thank you for your support, we have set up several rewards depending upon how much you'd like to give. From exclusive access to extra content, a first look at our new programs, behind the scenes specials, to special one-on-one -on -one monthly hangouts with our hosts and experts, we want to thank you in some big ways. So here's how it works. Go to our website at awesomesciencemedia.com and select the special Become a Producer icon at the top. You can watch the introduction video first. Then on the right, you'll see various giving levels and what rewards you'll receive. Pick one and the website will lead you through the sign up process. Then more than once a month, you'll get email notifications when the rewards are available. You can even give as little as $1 a month. By becoming one of our producers, you'll be able to help us produce even more great programming every month. We'll reach the world with the message of our great creator. Thank you for your help and support. We look forward to partnering with you. The fact that we can dig through the earth and find fossils is amazing. Discovering how they got there, that's the mystery. Scientists are adamantly trying to discover the truth that lies buried with these bones. But what is the data telling us? Dr. Chadwick's research lends itself to a global catastrophic event, more specifically, the global flood. The information's out there. What do you think?